Bruno, are you crazy? He's offside, mate. <laughs> Lino, he. Fuck's sake. Please just. Oh my god, I just want to know if he was off. guys, it is your boy Niran here and you are watching FTW. It's of course the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. But what's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, the UK experienced its hottest day with 40 degree heat recorded for the first time since records began. What have we done to the world? Look what we done. Yeah, look, the UK was looking like an Angolo Kante heat map. Yeah, it's on your I was inside and I was getting a tan. I felt like I was my own dinner at a 180 degrees fan. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> Weather advice was the same as a former Leicester City midfielder. And after six seconds outside, I was feeling like Simple Simon in a boxing ring. How can you be standing for less seconds than years you have on this earth? On to the football though now. And the big news is yet another Barcelona signing with Polish striker Robert Lewandowski officially arriving at the new camp. Nah, 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 lock him up right now. Get this man out of here. Now, this is a huge move with his international reputation and a statement from Barcelona. It's just a shame that their actual statement called him German. It once again begs the question, though, how are Barcelona doing this again? They're doing oil money spending with sunflower oil in the account. Financial fair play investigators are simply not doing their job. Frankie de Jong's bemused seeing Barca spend all this while being in 13 million euros of debt. They must have scanned Lewandowski as a banana at self-checkout in the club shop because that's the only way they'd be able to afford him. The bailiffs are on the way as we speak. Beak. Here we have Barca negotiators coming up with a plan to use their mum's pocket money for the deal. This was the no-brainer. This was the banker. This was the one that couldn't fail. This was one that's never failed. They've even run out of W's at the club shop to print on replica Lewandowski shirts. Okay, ¿por qué no podemos comprar las camisetas con el nombre de Lewandowski? Porque no tenemos por el doble y hay un Lewandowski que tiene dos. Exacto. ¿En serio? It's not the first time they've run out of dubs, is it? Just turn the M's that you have upside down, for God's sake. He's still going to be snubbed for the Ballon d'Or, even in La Liga. He can be seen coming out of the Barca Museum after stealing one of Messi's. And it's an opportunity for him to play against his former side, Bayern Munich, and help Barca to an 11-0 aggregate loss. Him and Thomas Muller will be, of course, familiar with each other when they line up against one another, but the score will still be 11-0. Now, but for real, I'm actually extremely excited to see him play there, and I'm interested to see how the deal will go for him. But there's been varying reactions. Back in the Bundesliga and Augsburg are not gonna miss him scoring against them. Khadith don't seem to be scared at all after beating Barca last season. Meanwhile, Antoine Griezmann can only be depressed watching another striker join, and it's Lewandowski in on goal! But wait, was, was that Griezmann's clearing it off the line? Manchester United are busy in the transfer window as well, once again, bringing in Ajax centre-back Lisandro Martinez for 54 million euros, a figure that matches his five foot four height. He will be, there he is, the shortest centre-back in the Premier League next season. Here we have him being driven to his medical by United representatives. He's looking like the bottom bar of Wi-Fi signal. Imagine when United go team building at Alton Towers. He's not getting on, bro. At least his first photo shoot at the club went well. On a level though, does it even matter? Harry Maguire's next to him with a helicopter pad forehead. But what we do need though is an investigation into Eric Ten Hag constantly signing players from Ajax. He's gonna be gutted when he's told he can't just sign players that he's already been for dinner with. So we don't have the capacity. <laughs> To be fair though, it seems to be working. As United's impressive preseason continued, they grabbed themselves a win versus Melbourne victory and Martial even scored against R9's Barca here. United fans are at the peak of excitement. They're already booking the day off for a Premier League parade. Wait, so let me get this straight. The season hasn't actually started yet. This is gonna be half of Manchester if United beat Brighton on game week one. Now I spoke about Martial and he's in serious goal scoring form right now. He can do no wrong to United fans. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Here we have him on the phone to Cristiano Ronaldo explaining that he's taken his place. I never, th I bet I never thought you'd be interviewed by me. And Big Ron must be fuming. He wanted out a couple of weeks ago on tour trying to convince people to sign him. Please, lads, I'm trying to get out of here. Bro, we are literally Coventry City. Now he's probably not even getting in the starting 11. And here we have him coming on as a 57th minute substitute. I'm about to disrupt a football match. Portuguese winger Nani came on to face his former club here. Mark Goldbridge tweeted that it was Nani time. I mean, look, you might be a fan of the older ladies, big man, but look, it's up to you. Are we interested to see how United do this season, you know? Jaden Sancho's firing and not in a South London sense. He's from South London. They don't mess about down there. Meanwhile, Marcus Rashford's not fed this many children dreams since the free school meals program. Chelsea's preseason involved playing Mexican side Club America and featured this own goal from Reese James. The greatest moment I've seen in Premier League football. My right back could never. Hi, right, listen, trust me on that one. You don't have to. The cameraman was not having it though, I'm afraid. He clearly thought that it was as Piliqueto who scored. The poor guy, I'd be fuming at the cameraman if that was me. Don't shut the fuck up, you fucking piece of bacon. Why they get picked up? <laughs> Meanwhile, Kai Havertz might not have scored with this strike, but he did something even more impressive. Yo guys, welcome to F2 Freestylers with Kai Havertz today. Meanwhile, at Tottenham's preseason and things aren't too friendly for Richarlison. Do you understand how aggressive you have to be to start swinging arms during a fitness build up? He saw this kit and it got him angry. Meanwhile, Brazilian fullback Emerson tweeted in Thai thanking supporters for giving them support on their preseason tour of Thailand, except they were playing in South Korea. You flew there, mate. How do you not know what country you're in? Now, Arsenal boss Mikel Arteta has been shopping at his former club with a condition known as Ten Hag Syndrome. Yeah, it's bad. You're, you're bold now, too. After bringing in Brazilian forward Gabriel Jesus, he's also purchased left back Alexander Zinchenko from Pep Guardiola's side. That's a good signing, I feel, as Kieran Tierney's so injury prone. Zinchenko is related to a literal war and he's still more reliable. Speaking of which, he's going to Arsenal. Has he not suffered enough? Fucking hell, Robbie! When is it gonna end? He's used to Manchester prices. The poor guy's in for a shock when he arrives in London and a double vodka and coke is 18. Pounds fifty. We're in London, aren't we? That's the fucking difference. But at the club he left behind and Man City committed the biggest war crime of the week. The monstrosity of the modern era. They made Zhao Cancelo number seven. Can you see that behaviour? What is happening? Who is this? I know he's been number seven before, but those clubs are sick as well. This is important stuff. He shouldn't be number seven. He's a right back who can also play left back and could probably do a job at Cam. And if he really wanted, he could go down the wings as well. You know know what actually listen just let him wear every shirt number at the same time or if you keep him wearing this he's the best portuguese number seven in manchester now then there's the news that the fa are planning to ban heading for under 12s in grassroots football as a way to reduce potential brain related injuries in later life i just want to know how this is going to be implemented and it's a ball in to lil jimmy are we expecting eight year olds to whip out scorpion kicks do they even know what a scorpion is at that age it's going to see an increase in techno what it is gonna see is a decrease in heading ability you've got no more target men coming through england's aerial presence is gonna be a shocker in a few years come on you fuck slug <laughs> oh you fucking f Oh, you fu- They're gonna be terrified as a floated cross gets sent in. Headers and volleys is simply volleys now. Lisandro Martinez is gonna be gassed if this becomes a thing in the Premier League. And we're gonna need VAR to see if George, age nine, used his shoulder or his head. <laughs> Oh, for God's sake, not again, Lino. Now, at Liverpool and Darwin Nunes' pre-season start to life at the club isn't getting any better. But you know what? I think I might know why. Darwin, Darwin Nunes, he came from Benfica to the Big Red. It's frightening with him and Luis Diaz. There's nobody else like Darwin Nunes. Check his hard drive. He's forcing a move, bro. He's seen this TikTok and he's handed in a formal transfer request. He doesn't want to be here anymore. Arsenal had an interview with their Brazilian trio, the Gabriels, and asked them the big questions. Name me. Three Brazilian players. 
Imagine one of them didn't fully say it. Gab, Gab, and, and Neymar. Gab. Oh, so, no, I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Right, which one of us did you leave out, bro? <clears throat> yeah, no, look, I swear, it's not like that. I'll... Brian Morris seriously needs to invest in a new phone, in my humble opinion. You're a millionaire, my lad. And you've got a phone looking like mine. We do not have similar bank accounts. And also, you can't just injure Erling Haaland's cousin like that. Chelsea's Edward Mendy was filmed sleeping on the team bus by Jorginho. Mendy in this state would have still done a better job with this Reese James back pass. Chelsea midfielder Conor Gallagher provided the worst penalty of all time. <laughs> The goalkeeper was off his line, but honestly, Connor doesn't even deserve a retake here. Meanwhile, there's serious, serious updates in the world of Love Island. As current Halifax town player, Jamie Allen is going into the villa. He's only just signed for them as well. Imagine he goes out early. He'll be back before the season starts. He says that usually when he shoots, he scores when it comes to the ladies. So let's see his shooting in action. Okay, so yeah, you see, we can spot him here trying to get a BT Sport job by getting close to Gemma. So obviously I think you're pretty attractive, so I want to get to know you. Well, you know what I think is attractive? The wind chopper B7000 hella crying out loud. Part. And joining him in the villa, we've got Deli Ali as well. Now then, in Spain and Gerard Piquet was video going into training, still listening to Shakira. Why are you doing this to yourself, bro? You might as well be sat in the corner of your living room crying to waka waka. Meanwhile, I hope Gavi doesn't hear that he's on the phone to his mum. Yeah, so babes, obviously I'll be over there in a second to give you the good, you get me? Gabby's mum's got it going on, obviously. Front Kessier is new in at Barcelona and the physical DM is already showing that off against Anzu Fati. <laughs> Meanwhile, well, Spanish forward Alvaro Morata tried some new skill moves this week. <laughs> And he still missed the target. Yo, guys, F2 back again. In Italy, and Romelu Lukaku had his Inter Milan initiation this week. I mean, he's putting a better performance here than he does in training. And if we listen in closer later on in the video, we'll be able to hear an exclusive of his second verse. This shit is wicked on these mean streets. None of my friends speak. At Atalanta, and they may have won 12 1 in a recent friendly, but a the goal they did concede was bad. At what point do we say this isn't 12 1 and just call it 13 0? Meanwhile, Sebastian Esposito of Andelect on loan from Inter was mic'd up during a preseason friendly against Leon. Whichever pushes is a fall, okay? I'm like that. Yeah, let's go on. Let's do it. Is Lacazette okay? His last two brain cells were doing nothing in the build-up to that goal. In France, and Neymar got these kids with this fake shot. All fun and games, but if the roles were reversed, he'd be on the floor rolling about in pain due to air displacement. On the topic of PSG, and a few of their players were pictured with legendary Japanese footballer Kazuyoshi Mayura, a 55-year-old that's still playing professionally. He is, in fact, older than PSG as a club. But let's be honest, we all are, really. And in a friend, Lionel Messi had the opportunity to score a penalty, but instead gave the ball to Sergio Ramos to take. What in the alternate universe are we witnessing here? But he did let Leo take and miss one against his former side, Real Madrid. Listen, Sergio, I see what you've done. You can't fool me. And it was a case of mistaken identity for French midfielder Tiemu Bakayoko, who was held at gunpoint by police who thought he was a criminal and thought he was somebody else. Look, listen, if the guy didn't get arrested for his time at Chelsea, there's no need to arrest him now. It doesn't get any worse than that. But on a serious level, must have been a very scary experience and I hope he's doing okay now. Russian side, Spartak Moscow are back on their Twitter shenanigans. Back when Lionel Messi was leaving Barcelona, they tweeted a fake DM conversation they had with the Argentinian asking him to join. The tables have turned though now that Ronaldo wants to leave and it's them doing the rejecting. It's a shithousery award for our favourite Russian side. In the Women's AFCON of 2022, Morocco have qualified for their first final ever thanks to a penalty shootout win 
cemented by Rosella Ayan, who after scoring a penalty didn't even realize she put them into the final. And shouts out to this competition as well. That game against Nigeria received 45,000 as an attendance. So in the women's game really is growing in popularity globally. But now we move on to our goals of the week and I am treating you this time. Because first of all, we've got Paulinho Curua scoring this unbelievable acrobatic attempt over in Brazil for Remo. Northern Irish side Linfield faced off against Welsh opposition in TNS, replacing the next round of Champions League qualification. And in the last minute of the game, trailing 1-0 and about to go out, Jamie Mulgrew scored this absolute screamer to level the tie on aggregate. They then went on to win 2-1 overall. The Swiss Super League exploded into life this week as on game week one, five minutes in, Ronnie Rodayin scored this incredible goal for Servet against St. Gallen. <laughs> And finally, with our fourth goal, over in Cambodia of all places, we've got this outrageous solo goal from Bruno Krenkel. Now on the theme of actual good ability, and over at Celtic, their Portuguese winger Jota is bringing out all the skill moves, but in contrast, this Dundee United back pass against Sunderland, not quite the same level, I don't think. Meanwhile in Germany, an FC Köln trialled new body cam footage against AC Milan. Imagine the conversations you'd hear if this was a thing in the Premier League. Look, Jack, listen, I want you to mark your man by his name Steve. Jack, for God's sake, listen to me. Meanwhile, we have live footage of Antonio Conte switching off the camera before he goes to beat up Harry Winks. Hello all and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. Hey, pai, melhor do mundo. And that concludes the beautiful game. Closer to home and for a promotional video or interview, Liam Cooper absolutely violated Welshman Dan James by pretending to help him into his seat because he was a little bit too small for it. This is just Lisandro Martinez's announcement. It's a shithousery award for Liam here. Having conceded 5 to Wrexham, Nantwich Town's admin compared it to the 5 out of 10 score that Green Lantern received on IMDB featuring the club's chairman. And it was a similar sense of annoyance for Blythe Spartans who when describing a sub Institution for Borough said don't know and don't really care. It's a very odd set of names for two substitutions there but we're at Fenerbahce and this interview didn't exactly go to plan. In Argentina and Racing versus Independiente ended in disaster and pain for Leandro Fernandez who was hit by a fish from the crowd. Who is getting a fish into a football match mate? You got the pyros today Johnny? No but have I got a haddock for you? Meanwhile in this FA Cup game in Nigeria between Remo Stars and Ijebu United, we've got perhaps some of the worst and most intentionally poor penalties you're ever gonna see. Apparently this was to protest poor officiating in the game. How's this guy putting his hands on his head as if he actually tried to score? The ball's in Ghana now, mate. You weren't trying at all. In Poland and under pressure, one attacker decided to try and play the ball to the referee. A Grêmio fan was filming the atmosphere behind him at a Brazilian league match when one of his mates fell over in the background. In Paraguay, we've got a shot hitting the side netting so ferociously that it actually ripped the side of the net. The next shot on goal is going to be an interesting one. Two, one. This is what you get for trying to take a selfie with your player scoring a pen. In the Japanese third tier and Kagoshima United play next to a volcano. Well, that volcano literally erupted whilst they were playing a league game against Sagamihara. I mean, there's a volcano in the badge, so I'm assuming they're used to this sort of thing. I have now come to the conclusion that back garden head tennis is my new favorite sport. Bye. The South African national team Twitter was wilding this week, posting this picture with basically no context. Hey yo, what's the at though? Just for like obviously research purposes for the city. After Leandro Damiao's attempt at a step over a few weeks ago, it seems the Brazilians have forgotten how to do it entirely. Meanwhile, I'm sorry to whoever this woman is actually dating, but she's cheating on you because she does not want to be pictured on television at all. Now that it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for because over in Romania, I just don't know how this 
Foundation continues to provide content every single time. Because we've got yet another unique story here of referee George Gaman having to show a red card to FC Petrolul's bus driver. The unlikely recipient was sat on the sidelines along with the coaching staff and protested after a penalty was awarded against his side. The referee didn't rate it and showed him a red card. I don't know what the punishment is for this. The players have got to drive themselves home or something. Elsewhere, and we've got a slightly smaller season ticket holder than we would usually see at games. This is the Don that threw the fish from the crowd. In Poland, and after a dramatic goal here, the scorer's teammate was not willing to let him prosper. I don't think this is a recent clip, to be honest with you, but the timing here from Flamengo's manager is sensational. In Mexico, and one defender managed to accidentally score from his own half after the ball bounced unpredictably for the opposition goalkeeper. Speaking of goalkeeping howlers, and a Brazilian game between Crato and Retro, we've got two howlers from the same shot stopper here. I say shot stopper, he's not stopping any shots. In the Chilean 5th Division, and the ball was delivered for the referee to kick off a game there using a drone, which is so big that it looks like it could attack a small village on its own. And in the world of futsal, over in Indonesia, it's fair to say this man was not too pleased with a refereeing decision being given against him. <laughs> <laughs> now there is time for still nil nil and you guys know the score by now this is a segment of the show where i bring to the best of sunday league and amateur football and this time we have the story of winleton community fc who are ready for a hard fought closely battled game against wickham afc full time we lost. Look, this was a game of fine margins. I personally thought that goal number 13, there was a foul in the build-up. Specsavers replied asking if they could book in an appointment for their goalkeeper. Meanwhile, the performance was so bad here that even the ball is deflated in this picture. On to the weird stuff though now. Over in Southeast Ghana in the wonderful town of Teshi, we've got some slightly makeshift VAR being used by officials over there. The FA of DR Congo are looking for a new manager at the moment for their national team and decided to post on social media looking for potential candidates. These lot are in the mud. Imagine if the English FA just accepted Gareth from down the pub for an interview. US League One side Union Amaha are using a one-off kit for this weekend, and I kid you not, the shirt is printed as corn. They'll be hoping that they're not a side dish in their next game. But finally, we're going to end on some serious news here. I'm sure a lot of you will have seen it, but it revolves around Borussia Dortmund striker Sebastian Haller. The new Dortmund signing was taken home from his preseason tour with his new club after feeling ill. He was taken in for an observation and the doctors found a tumour on the Ivorian International. So I wish him the best and a speedy recovery. Hopefully it's been found at a very early stage and we'll see him back playing very, very soon. But that is going to wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a wonderful day enjoy yourselves and goodbye